the way up, sit in first class. Pedal to the metal, tank full of gas. Can't slow down, I'm moving too fast. Headed back to the county, riding full blast. I'm all the way up, sitting first class. Pedal to the middle, gas on smash. I can't slow down, I'm moving too fast. Headed back to the county, we got a road dog. Well, hello and welcome back to another video. In my last video of this trailer build, part three, I left you with me just cutting out the walls. Well, now I've got those walls cut out. It's time to put those walls together and start building a structure. So I'm going to be building a jig in this video and then also cutting out all my supports, gluing my walls. So come along and see how it goes. Well, here I'm setting up my table saw so I can rip these two by twos down to a narrower width. Basically, I'm making them the same width as my foam insulation. This way, when it all goes together and glues together, the foam insulation will actually help to add some structure to my wall. This way it'll all be nice and tight and fit and no hollow spots won't sound like a drum if something hits it either and it'll be nice and warm. Sometimes the best things are made out of necessity. Just took a couple pieces of scrap wood, the hacksaw blade stuck in the middle. Look how nice it cuts. Well, here's a good look at how I put the walls together. You can kind of see all the little pieces go here and there, and then I'm gonna screw and glue them together. So as I lay them all out here, I decided to do one wall here on the garage floor and get it all put together, and then build another wall on the back of my trailer and get it all put together. And then I'll take those two walls and I'll stick them together on top of one another and uh, leave them for a few days and let them cure and get good and dry because the weather is, is right at 50 degrees, 55 degrees, and uh, that's kind of cold for the glue. So I've got to give it ample time to dry. Well, here we go. It's been six days now sitting here with everything I had that I could put on top of this without breaking anything or taking something apart. But as you can see, I got plenty of stuff on top, pinching these two together, along with some clamps here and there. And it's also all screwed together as well. So screwed, glued, and tattooed, so to speak. But it's all in there good and these are my walls i'm kind of happy how they came out they're pretty sturdy standing them up and uh I'm pretty pretty happy with them so far we'll see how it goes as far as the build goes but so far i'm really liking them a lot more structured than i thought they might have uh, even wiggling up here by the door where there's no support in there yet it's still pretty strong so nothing left to do but trim off the the foam insulation here and get this wall ready to become a real wall now that the wall's being trimmed out, you can kind of really see where I've kind of made some mistakes as I was cutting along the edge here. A little bit wavy, but you know, that's not going to make that big a difference when my piece of plywood comes over the roof and lays on top of that. There's also going to be a big wad of sealant there that's going to take up a lot of that, as well as fiberglass at the end that's going to come over the top. So hopefully it's nothing that you won't be able to hide with the molding. Here's a quick look at the jig I'm building. Basically, part of it is going to be the frame of the trailer, but these little 45s and this other piece across the back, they're all coming off. They're, they're only here for me to hold this structure into one place so I can get it on the floor and put these walls together where they go and get my uprights in position. So here's all my uprights fitting nicely in the notches that I made. Got a couple doubles here and there where I need more strength uh, for later for a rack and also the door uh, being in a certain position. But as you can see, the jig down here at the bottom, it's just free floating on that jig right now because you'll see later on where when I connect it to the trailer, I'll have to bolt that, that frame down to the trailer and then bolt the box down to that frame. So it'll be an interesting process and I'll show you why later. Well, here I'm trying something that didn't quite work. Um, basically, I took this these straps and bent this board and left it like that for four days hoping that it would stay bent when I undid it. And as you can see, that did not happen. So it was off to plan B. I had to figure out a new way to do this and uh, I'm gonna have to wet these. But before I did, I just had to give it a little check just to see how close I was. And uh, as I can see with my 300 pound butt pushing on this, it just wasn't enough. So after getting the trailer all scored away, 
That went on with plan B. This is my truck. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Well, as you might have guessed, I'm kind of proud of my old little truck here. It's a 2007, doesn't leak a drop of fluid. It's got 290,000 miles on it, and I ask it to do everything. Not just be a jacuzzi here for making some boards, but I also take it in crazy places off-road. It's only a two-wheel drive truck. Today, I'm turning it into a swimming pool for my telephone. And yeah, that happened. But, you know... It's a great truck, and I love it, and this is the way I'm going to bend my wood. A word of caution, though, if you are going to do this with your truck, keep in mind this is a half-ton truck, and I'm only going to put about four inches of water in it, so uh, I'm not going to do the math on that, but it's not going to be a half-ton. But if I were to fill this thing up with water, it would be more than a half-ton, and I could damage my truck. So if you're going to do this, keep that in mind. And here's a quick look at how I had it sitting in here. Just sitting in here soaking. Let it soak for about four hours. Right about four hours, yeah, I would say. Yeah, a little bit. Not too bad. Now it was ready to take out and dry off a little bit and then get her to fit. All right, and here I'm doing something I should have done before I put it in here, and that's mark the center on my board and mark the center in my trailer. This way, all I have to do is line up my lines in the center and start this off and have this thing laying it out perfect. Now you might ask, Chuck, why did you do this in the center and not on the sides? Or, or split it down the middle, you're going to have two seams now instead of one. There's all kinds of other ways of doing this. Well, my reason behind this is, eventually, I'm going to have this kind of duct work that's going to go in here for an air and heating system that I'm going to put in. And uh, basically, I'm going to need those runners on the side to be places for that duct work as well as uh, some lighting. So those side panels, they're not getting glued in like this center board was. This thing was glued and screwed, and the side ones are just going to get screwed in. They're not going to get glued in as well. And that's how I have access up in there and uh, be able to fix things and things as time goes on if I have to replace uh, any of the lighting that I'm going to put in there or, or change any of the ductwork that I'm going to put in there. But either case... I'm going to use this as a, an advantage here and do some contrasting uh, ceiling pieces or something. I haven't quite decided yet if I'm going to stain this piece or I'm going to cover it with some material. But either case, uh, that's what it's going to be. Now here I'm taking and doing the top. This is after I notice I've already put in my insulation pieces and now I'm gluing it down and I'm going to put in the big piece on the top. now. Contrary to what I did inside, I'm actually going to put this over to one side. And reason being is this is just one big surface that's going to get coated with fiberglass and then be painted. So you're never going to see the seams on this. Um, it's just going to be one big seamless roof. Uh, after I put the fiberglass on, I'm going to sand it all down nice and smooth and then hit it with a little bit more glass and just really make that finish really, really, really smooth. So this plywood's never going to be seen again. So that's why I'm putting over to one side just to make it easy to square off. And then I'll put my other smaller piece there in that hole. And once I get that all in, then I just have one piece across the back to do. Now, anybody ever had this kind of problem? I'm over here trying to fight with this screw, trying to get this screw in. Don't know why it won't go in. Well, that's because there's no threads on it. Doggone it. They made a blank screw and put it in the box. Dirty, rotten scoundrels. Well, here I am putting the last of it together. It's all still wet, and uh, I've got it together, and I see this little impurity here, and I'm hoping that when it dries, it'll straighten itself out. So I took my little butter heater here, stuck it inside, and then closed it all off with some leftover insulation and let that sucker burn for the seven, eight hours that the Mr. Buddy burns for and leave it sealed up in there overnight, and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Well, unfortunately, as this dried, it didn't help itself out, but it's all right. I'm going to put a piece of molding across this and uh, hopefully a, a staple or two and pull them together and it'll fix that or at least hide it anyway. But there it is. Same problem on this side. I have to do the same thing there. All right, now here I'm doing something that uh, I kind of regret doing, but 
I did it anyway. So I'm using a jigsaw to cut out the edge, just to trim that edge. Now, I probably should have taken my router out of my router table and put on my ball bearing and all that kind of stuff, and then I could have cut this thing like perfect. But I was a little worried that the ball bearing may just leave a mark along the top of my trailer, align the whole way. But uh, I decided just go ahead and give it a whirl. I mean, I'm pretty good with my skill saw, so I gave it a shot. And i tell you what, didn't come out too bad. There's a couple spots that you'll see later that I kind of messed up on. But all in all, it came out really straight. And uh, with a little bit of sanding, it was actually really, really nice. All thanks to my little old skill saw. Well, still super hard to get an idea on what she really, really looks like. But all ready for the fiberglass for the roof. Once that's on, I'll mount her on the trailer and start working on the inside. But for now, we're all set up. Did a little sanding here, got this a little bit more smooth along here. And coming around the side here, took my sander this as well. Got that nice and smooth. You can see here where I kind of, uh, uh, uh. So I'm gonna need a, a one inch molding now instead of a half inch molding, but that's okay. And then here, I just took this edge off. So this is nice and smooth going across here. So when I put my fiberglass down, you won't see any kind of a line or hump at all. It'll just be nice and smooth rolling off to the edge here. And on the edge here, I left a bit of an overhang. And uh, I left that really just to protect the doors as they go on later on. And I'm hoping that's going to be thick enough. If not, I'm going to be attaching a rain gutter to the edge of this. Well, it's the following weekend. As you might notice, I snuck out and did a little bit of patchwork. Nothing more than some wood putty and filled all the little holes in the screws and whatnot. Got it all ready for sanding. In case you're wondering how I'm moving it, I just took both my stools and stuck them one under each end. Pretty easy. All right, so getting out the sanding. No big deal, right? Now, you might be wondering, that's an ugly 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 patchwork there dude what you do basically i just took a bunch of sawdust off the floor mix it with some glue and put it on there and uh you know it works it came nice and smooth and it just filled anything i needed to because i'm just gonna lay fiberglass on top as you see me doing here i really gotta give a shout out to my local marine store inland marine they're pretty great man the guys over there were really nice they really helped me with what kind of product to use the guy builds wooden boats for him, himself in a hobby so uh, he really had a lot of experience as far as putting fiberglass like this onto plywood so it was great to pick his brain and get this kind of idea of, of folding my tape in half before i got started this way it'll already automatically try to bend around the edge and then uh, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, saw one where somebody actually used these little tacks to hold everything in place for themselves, and got my epoxy together and started the process. Now I must say, this is the first time that I'm using epoxy rather than a resin process, so it's gone on really thick, and I'm thinking to myself, well, it's cold, so it's going to go on thick, you know, but it seems to be setting nicely and doing what it's supposed to, but it just didn't go as far as it should have. Now I've got a little bit of waste here, but nothing really eccentric. Nothing to justify what happened here. It didn't sell me enough product. I ran out of one coat. I was supposed to have enough to do two coats. What happened here? Definitely, definitely was short sailed here. I hope this doesn't affect my build because I won't be able to get this material probably till Monday. That means I don't know when I'm going to be able to get it back on. So all this is going to be all cured and hardened by then. And uh, I still ain't going to be able to get that done. So that's kind of a drag. But it is what it is, I guess, you know. But I like how the product went on. It looks nice and smooth. It uh, seems to be self-leveling. So hopefully it'll work out good. As you might have guessed, it is below 40 degrees here. So I've got this heater going here. And in a minute here, I'm going to push it into the garage, into right there, and be a lot closer, and let this thing get, get baking. 
So with this heater going, I was able to maintain the temperature in here at right about 65 degrees pretty much all night long. So it cured pretty nicely and was ready to go for the next day. Well, if you're wondering, that tape is now a permanent part of the build. It's under the fiberglass. No biggie. I must confess, I'm a little salty about this. The salesman told me I was going to have more than enough material to cover this to finish this project. And I used every bit I had. And you can see, it's like, what, the last quarter here didn't quite get done. Now, in his defense, it was kind of cold, you know, when I put this together. So this product was very, very jelly, very thick. So it went on incredibly thick to the point where I don't need to put another coat on. There's a couple places that I need to touch up. You know, like right here, you'll see there's a little bit of bubble. So I'll sand that out and then uh, retouch it up with some resin when I finish this part. And uh, but other than that, it's solid. It's uh, not 100% cured yet. It's still not tacky, but still soft. So a little bit more work to do, but I'm pretty happy with it so far, other than I, I ran out of product. Well, here we are. Finally got some more product. Gonna finish this thing up. Hope this blends in well. I haven't been able to find any videos on how to do this. So I'm just going with it. What I've done here is just kind of roughed up the edges with some sandpaper and uh, kind of gave it a little bit less slope this way. This way it doesn't, it gives me more of a chance for it to gel up and be thicker on the top right here, hopefully. And I had to cut a couple little patches here Put a little bit more around the end here and then on the edge here you'll see we're just kind of missing out didn't hold well there's a big bubble so i'll just put that back in there another spot right here and everything else is just kind of like there was a little bubble here so i just kind of ground that out real quick and i'll just drop some more resin in that there's a couple little spots like that here there are bubbles and uh i think uh It'll come together, hopefully, here shortly. So this here is what I've been working with. Some good old West Systems 105 epoxy resin and West Systems 205 hardener, along with uh, some tools that I got at my local hardware store. I got a roller there, I'm sorry, my local marine store. Some brushes and a spreader. And uh, I've went ahead and I don't have a scale, so this stuff says to mix to weight, but I went with volume. I make that five parts, so four ounces to 20 ounces is my mixture. And I've already ran that on the rest of it so far, so it's working pretty good. Here we go. Well, I crossed my fingers and uh, said my prayers and went to it. Just started filling it in putting plenty of resin on there, not caring if it comes off the back and drips over. Just wanted to try to get it the same thickness as it was before. It's probably about 10 degrees warmer today than it was when I did this before. So it's a uh, nice in one regard, but also in another regard, it's gonna be just a completely different pour, different batch altogether. So I'm really hoping this comes out right. I'm gonna try to use more product than I need this way that product's uh, extra there. I can sand off more if I don't have enough. I don't wanna have to try to keep putting layers and layers on just to match the other layer. It's just gonna be a big mess that way if I can get a ton of it on now and then go ahead and shave that down to the same size as the other, then I'll be better off, I think, anyway. Could be wrong on that, I'm not a professional, but that's my plan, that's my game plan. So as I finish that back half here, I just kind of moved around the edges and got everything else done. Well, here I'm starting to do my patchwork. These are uh, the spots where, uh, like I said earlier in the video, I kind of messed up on my saw cuts and basically it created a gap. And that gap was filled in by, by my silicone sealant that I put in there, but the stuff shrank a little bit. So basically it created a couple of dimples that are running along the edge. So when I put the fiberglass down, there's air behind them. So basically here, I'm having to kind of pack that in there and, and get rid of those things. As I go around this thing, I'm just kind of looking at all the spots, making sure that I'm kind of blended it in. I don't want to have to do a whole lot more sanding after this. I know I'm going to have to do some, but 
I, I really want to try to make this kind of the last time if I can, if you know what I mean. So I put so much material on that I had to go back as now it's getting tacky and, and make sure there's no big drips that are there. That it's nothing I can't live with as far as lumpy. Um, I just as soon have something come up in like a, a stalagmite looking thing and have the rest around it to be nice and smooth uh, versus, you know, something that's kind of a divot because I can always sand off a stalagmite, but as far as a divot goes, you've got to refill. So I've got this ugly section that's kind of taking place there and I just keep adding more to it and dripping more, more fluid in there. This way it just kind of self levels itself out on top. And as it gets tacky, it kind of sticks more and ends up getting thicker. So it seems to be working for me, but it's also keeping me humping as far as getting around it and making sure these things don't turn into big puddles and drips. And right here, you see me actually dripping more material in because that's where the seam is. And I want that seam there just to be to be gone. So the old puddles, all those little drips and, and things that were going up in there and whatnot, Basically, I was just filling all those little hills and valleys. Well, now, just to keep it all nice and warm, I took some insulation pieces, strapped them to the ceiling, put out my tank top heater, and then came over the other side, put down an electric heater, and then let this stuff just start to bake. Just start to bake. I was able to get it up to 70 degrees on a 50-degree day. Not too bad for a tent. That's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, about 25 degrees Celsius. So here we are the next day. Knew we were going to have problems with this. Got a big bubble here to deal with, but as far as that goes, it looks worse than it is. You can see those lines in there, but you can't really feel them much. So what I hoped I could do worked. That's I put more material on there than I need, needed to. This way I can come in and sand it and bring it down and still have plenty of material left over. And uh, nastiness here. We'll see what happens when I sand that out. And then this right here is just, I knew this was going to be a problem as well. So this is all going to get sanded out and maybe patched. We'll see. And definitely cut and we'll see what we do over here. But all in all, these patches here came out pretty nicely. This one here, especially. A little sanding to do on the edges here. A little grinding, but not bad, not bad. So I put on my PPE and got to sand and got down to the bottom of it all, figured it all out. Took a nice wet cloth to it, wiped it all down, then took some acetone and cleaned out the little cracks and everything where I was going to reapply my product and got it ready for the second coat. So this final coat here that I'm going to put on, I actually mixed a little hot and that worked pretty well because I wanted it to get tacky real quick. But I barely made it. You'll see. And all I'm doing here is really just kind of like taking it to where I just about got down to the fiberglass, or maybe I got down to the fiberglass in some spots, and I'm just kind of getting that, that epoxy back over the top of it. This way, it has no problem with repelling water or anything else that may try to come at it and uh, keeping that structure good. But basically, everything I'm doing now is primarily cosmetic. Um, there's a couple spots that are structurally um, an issue that I had to fix and repair, and we'll get to those. but. Most of the work you're seeing me here in this section is just kind of covering it to making sure that everything I sanded that I got kind of deep on is going to be nice and covered and filling in a couple little bit of a, a little bit of divots here and there maybe that kind of formed uh, that I found in the sanding process. It really came out a lot better than I thought it was. I thought it'd be a lot worse, particularly in the area I'm cleaning right now. It's kind of uh, amazing it didn't. In this area here, I'm having a problem where my cuts were just not that clean earlier, like I mentioned. So this time I'm going to take fiberglass and I'm actually going to stuff it up into the crack and make this just a solid fiberglass hole there. So as you can see, it's a little bit of a gap and I'm getting rid of that by just stuffing it full 
and making this just one solid piece of fiberglass. It should never leak here. It's probably gonna be the strongest part of the trailer. This is really my expertise when it comes to fiberglass work. Um, pretty much all I've done is patchwork. Surfboards, portable restrooms. I used to own my own portable restroom company and my family did too. So we had a lot of work to do with fiberglass as far as making things get fixed, making things work, attaching things together that don't belong together, that kind of stuff. So I know how to make fiberglass stick. I know how to form it into things and... This right here is going to hold very, very well, I'm telling you. The biggest trick is saturation. Is that material's got to be totally saturated. There can't be any air bubbles in it at all. Just squish them and push them out. Get all the air out. Make sure that the gap is completely full of fiber. And make sure that once that epoxy's in there, it's in there nice and tight, where it's not wanting to just drip out and fall out and, and cause another divot. you got to think about gravity. So... As long as you're, you're pack of material into a crevice and it's holding in on its own, usually the epoxy is just going to help it hold in even better. So if you've got something that wants to keep falling out, it's probably going to fall out. So put it in a different way so it doesn't fall out. So it wants to stay all by itself. This way the epoxy is just going to hold it all into place just so nicely. And if you put enough material on it, you'll be able to sand it down and you won't even know it's there. Well, this right here was my biggest trouble spot. I was most concerned with it. It had all the raised pieces, all the bubbles, and it really sanded out really nice. I was able to get a lot of material down underneath it. So basically, I'm just making sure that all the fibers are, are nice and covered and there's no big globs left over. And overseeing it, I kind of like what I see. Well, check out that cup. Look at that. Is that smoke? Yeah. That's smoke. Hum. I wonder if he's going to notice it. You think he'll notice it? Oh, what's that? Oh, wow, I better get this off. Huh. Wow, look at that. Oh, that smoke. It's just setting off right now. Now I know what they mean when they say this stuff fires off quick. Yeah, warm day today. It fired off real quick. But luckily, I am just barely doing a little touch-up work. Everything else is done, and I'm good. Because this stuff is already starting to harden. It's kind of like when you freeze water in the freezer, the top half is froze and the bottom half is still liquid. All right, so we're still drying here, but I'm actually pretty happy with the way it came out here. Even this whole blend here, if you see, actually pretty smooth. The thing I regret is using my grinder. I should have just toughed it out and got some 40 grit sandpaper and worked my way down. And uh, if I were to do this again, I will definitely have a more powerful sander to use. But this wood stuff you see here is actually covered in glass. It's got a thin coat of fiberglass over it as well. And see, these are the things I'm talking about here, these little depressions here. And that's all just from me going crazy with my grinder, but I'm gonna live with that being that it's the roof. Maybe the paint will self-level a little bit and help out. But even the section right here where it was really bad, it came out really good. Plenty of glass underneath it. I was able to just to sand it down and it came out really sharp. It actually came out way better than this over here that I actually had to repatch right here. Kind of leaving it up right now, kind of yucky looking, but it'll dry and then I'll sand that down. And then I had a new one sur surface here. This is the old one over here. It's just fine. But the new one here needed a little more attention, so took care of it. Went ahead and applied more epoxy to the little spots that I had uh, taken it down to the glass. And now I'm just waiting for it to dry. Man, I tell you what, the toughest part of this whole build this weekend and last weekend has been that it's been raining like crazy all week long. And we got two weekends in a row and I look at this beautiful sunshine and blue sky. And uh, here I am working in this stupid tent, working on a project that's gonna get me outdoors more. But this time of year, these sunny days, they're a commodity here. And uh, oh man, I'm almost killing myself just not taking advantage of them. But at the same token, these warmer temperatures are allowing me to put this epoxy on here and I'll be able to prep this all for paint. 
uh, tonight. I probably won't get it painted because it's going to be dropping in temperature here in the next hour or two. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun goes down about 5, 5.30. So we're going to start getting back down in the lower 40s here in, oh, two hours. So I'm not going to get it painted this weekend. Doggone it. And uh, oh, well, just what it is. I don't want to rush it. I want to do it right. So I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. I'm really shocked that it did come out as well as it did because it was looking pretty nasty here with that patch. But uh, I put lots of material on there, so I was able to shave down quite a bit and get it level and still have plenty left to keep it structural. So anyway, it's been a great build so far. Um, I can't wait to get this thing on the trailer and actually have my neighbors stop wondering what the hell this guy's doing over there under that tent. Well, look what came in. That box has got my hinges in it. One five foot hinge and two 24 inch hinges for my doors. Boy, boy, I'm just that much closer to a shell. <laughs> so with all that, we're gonna call this a video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Next time you see this thing, we'll be painting the roof. Back to the county, we got a road dog.